Hi, this is Pastor Steve with an encouraging word. Well, it's Friday, the last day of the week, and our last day to talk about the Lord's Prayer. Today we look at two requests that are linked together and are vital for those that seek to follow Jesus, to live a life of wholeness. The prayer is, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Some of his prayer phrased it to say, let there be nothing in me that could lead me away from you. I think of two things when I think of that prayer. One is Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, a psalm Jesus would have been familiar with. The psalmist asked of God, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know what I'm thinking. See if there's any offensive way or wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The psalmist is saying, Lord, search my heart because at times we don't know what's in our hearts. And so the temptation comes, a test comes to see what's there. Are we more concerned about God's way and God's way of doing things? Are we more concerned about what we want and our ways and our way of doing things? I mean, not into temptation. We're drawn into the wrong choice. For a t- temptation is just a test. A test is just a, a choice where we have answers to give. But so often we know that we're apprehensive about that test because sometimes we know what's inside us and what we're prone to do. Jesus, before he left the disciples, in John chapter 14, verse 30, says, The prince of this world is coming, but he has no hold on me. He has no handle inside me. We too often know we have handles that we can be tempted by. Anger, frustration, lust, desires, impatience. And so there's a handle that when the test comes that the one who tests us, the enemy of our souls, the devil, well, we can be led astray because we'll follow that way versus God's way. And so the prayer is, Lead me not into temptation. Don't let there be temptation put in my path. But we know temptation is part of life, part of those that follow Jesus. Even Jesus, after he was baptized in the River Jordan and the Spirit of God descended upon him, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased, was then led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested for 40 days. And we know the temptations Jesus faced. But after he faced those temptations and what was revealed, what was in his heart was God's way and God's will, what says he returned in the power of the Spirit. We won't grow unless we're tested. Just like in school, we don't gain knowledge unless we're tested. And hopefully the test comes, and if we fail again, if we go our way again, well, maybe we'll finally say, I'm tired of doing this. Let me pick a different path. Let me go a different direction. Let me not do the crazy thing, which is to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Lead us not into temptation. When we fail, that's why the petition above it is, forgive us our trespasses. We go against what God wants by going our way. So temptation is not to be feared. We fear it because we know we're prone to make the wrong choices. But if we do make the wrong choice, the prayer continues, deliver me from evil or from the evil one. Jesus has said that the, John chapter 10, verse 10, that the thief, the the devil, comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And so when we go against God's way, we land land in the evil place, then things are stolen from us, joy and peace. Things are killed within us, and things are destroyed by our sins, by the things we do wrong. And if we stayed in the evil place, that's all we'd experience. But thankfully, God does deliver us from evil and the evil one. He did it first and foremost on the cross when he died for our sins, that we could be forgiven, that death could be defeated. And the last word of our life would not be death and separation from God, but new life in heaven because of his forgiveness, because of his grace. And so we pray, lead me not into temptation, knowing that temptations will come, testing will come as part of God's working in our lives. And because we're still pulled by things we shouldn't be until we learn to make other choices. But there's forgiveness in the falling. And he will deliver us from evil and the evil one. That will not be the end of our story, 
and disaster because of his grace, because of his forgiveness. Now in Matthew's gospel, the Lord's prayer ends with, Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Thine is the kingdom because we serve the king of heaven, our father in heaven. We pray his kingdom come, his will be done. Is the power because he's the power to give us our daily needs, our daily bread. He has the power to forgive our sins. He has the power to deliver us from the evil one. And to him be the glory. In a life that's filled with grace, that's learning to follow Jesus, that's learning to pray that kind of prayer that Jesus teaches us, well, God will be glorified and our lives will be changed. And this world can be different. when We pray into the Lord's Prayer, live out of the Lord's Prayer, and become the people that pray and talk to God always and everywhere. And that's an encouraging word today from the Lord's Prayer from Pastor Steve.